Welcome to Movie Class by Pizza Flicks. Please stay tuned for today's program, but first, some tasty tidbits from your host. She arrived in Hollywood early 1944, thanks to that beauty contest back home in Denver, CO. This glamorous 19-year-old caught the eye of suave press agent Cecil Cohen, 22 years her senior. She didn't know it yet, but the life of Barbara Bates would never be the same. Cohen arranged a meeting with a producer at Universal Pictures who was searching for the most beautiful woman in the world for his next picture, Salome, where she danced. By August, Barbara was one of the eight finalists out of 20,000. Ultimately, the role went to the exotic Yvonne de Carlo. The runner-ups were cast as the seven Salome girls, but Barbara was the only one offered a contract by the studio. After a year of mostly uncredited hat girl or girl by the pool roles, she was unceremoniously dropped by Universal. The year hadn't been a complete disappointment. She and Cecil fell madly in love and were wed during a secret ceremony in Mexico just days after his divorce. Cecil kept his young bride in the public view with an endless stream of cheesecake photos. She even made the cover of Life magazine. His plan worked. Barbara was signed by Warner Brothers in May of 1947. Around this time, she shot a Life magazine spread by renowned lensman Philip Holzman. His incisive portraits appeared on 101 Life covers. And let's not forget Holzman's revolutionary collaborations with surreal artist Salvador Dali. At Warner Brothers, she quickly worked her way up from uncredited innkeeper's daughter to the leading lady in Danny Kaye's musical comedy, The Inspector General, only to be abruptly fired after refusing to promote the film at its New York premiere. The monster of Hollywood, King Kong, as the head of Columbia Pictures was known, offered her a contract with one condition. She divorced her husband. Barbara refused, smart girl, as she soon landed in the big leagues with a contract at 20th Century Fox. In 1950, she played a very small part in one of the biggest films of the year. Barbara only hits the screen in the last few scenes, but sums up the whole point of the film and left audiences hoping she would star in a sequel. The King of Comedy had another idea. When Chaplin learned Barbara had studied ballet as a teen, he knew he had found the star for his next picture. Barbara was ecstatic. Not so fast. 20th Century refused to loan her out for this film. Newcomer Claire Bloom played a suicidal ballerina instead. Barbara sunk into a deep depression. She was cast as the love interest in a Martin Lewis comedy, but never truly recovered. She became victim of extreme mood swings, insecurity, and chronic depression. After failing to complete two films, 20th dropped her. In 1957, Bates made her last film, Apache Territory, with her friend Rory Calhoun. In 1960, Cecil was diagnosed with cancer, and Barbara put her career on hold. When he passed away seven years later, her depression worsened. On March 18, 1969, in her mother's garage, Barbara Bates took her own life by carbon monoxide poisoning. She was 43 years old. Right before Barbara signed with 20th Century Fox, there was Quicksand, released March 21, 1950. Do blondes have more fun? That is the question Mickey Rooney risks it all to find out. Now imagine, if you will, James Cagney as the diamond-hard blonde waitress. In stark contrast, baby-faced Barbara Bates as the girl on constant standby. Throw in Peter Lorre as, what else, the slimy villain, and we have a late-era film noir and a five pepperoni pizza flicks.
cut it by. Fine. Buzz, uh, how's the fishing these days? It's not very good around here, but there's a big run of marlin up Tijuana. Yeah? We're taking a party down there Sunday morning. How do you like this guy? Gets paid to go fishing while we slave over a hot carburetor. <laughs> you said it. Hey, Dan, we got room for one more. Why don't you come along? When are you gonna get back? Late Monday night. Monday night? That lets me out. I couldn't get Monday off. Yeah. You could get away if you wanted to. You just don't want to miss spending Sunday with the girlfriend. Helen? No, they busted up a couple of months ago. By the way, she called you again this morning. She did? I told her you wasn't in for the 19th time. Good, good. How do you like this guy? There's a dame I trade my right arm for, and he gives it the run around. Maybe he's found a new dish. No, I spent four years in the Navy fighting for freedom. Why get anchored down now? Besides, she was getting too serious. The old wedding bells, huh? They get louder and louder. I figured she's too nice to string along. But she won't take no for an answer. Some dames are sure hard to shake off. I once knew a blonde. Boy, and her name, name was Margie. How'd you know? We've heard the story a dozen times. A couple of dozen times. <laughs> hey, we better be getting back or old man Mackey will blow a fuse. Right, here, that's for you. Time you get off tonight. Six thirty. Seven. Don't forget your change. I happen to have my autograph book here with me. Name and address. I'm afraid you've made a mistake. I don't come with the merchant's lunch. Oh, now don't be like that. I think you're wonderful. Anything wrong in that? No, but well, and how about you and me tonight, huh? I work tonight. Till when? Till 9.30. You like, uh, you like Red Nichols in his outfit? Yeah, I think they're great. They're playing over at the music bar on the pier. I thought I'd pick you up after 9.30 and we'd go over and give him a listen, okay? Okay. See you at night. Seventy-five, I one. Hey, Chuck, I just remembered something. Remembered what? It's five days until payday, and I'm flat busted. How are you holding? I'm fractured. Me too. Well, I've got to figure out some way to get some Guinness, or how else am I going to take that gorgeous creature out to the music bar? Why don't you ask uh, old man Mackey for an advance? Oh, that old guy, he wouldn't give you the sweat off his glasses. Yeah, he's sure a mean old buzzard. Hey, Buzzard, I'm glad you said that. Buzz Larson owes me 20 bucks. Why don't you call him up down at the dock? My friend, you have just read my mind. Hello, is Buzz Larson there, please? Oh, hello, Buzz. Hi, boy, this is Danny. Listen, uh, could you let me have that 20 bucks you owe me? Oh, that's swell. Believe me, you're a lifesaver. I'll be down tonight and pick it up. Huh? Tomorrow? Oh, wait a minute. Boy, I... I need it right away. You don't get paid until tomorrow. Well, I understand, sure. Okay. All right, thanks anyway, kid. Bye. Now, who left that light on in the washroom? Not me. Well, it was one of you fellas. You're all alike. You don't care what you do with my money. You think I own stock in the power company? One moment, please. 
And then I said, yes, this is the supervisor speaking. Helen Colgan, are you listening to me? Yeah. I don't think you've heard one word. You just seem to be walking around in a dream lately. Oh, Millie, I think I'll say goodbye to you here. There's, there's some things I have to get. What things? Where? Oh, just some things. Over on State Street. I know where you're going, Helen. And you're making a big mistake. If he wants to see you, he knows your telephone number. I know, but I... But nothing. You're making a fool of yourself. I think I am. Goodbye. Well, when you need it uh, fast sometimes, you, you haven't got time. A you know? lighter. What? A standard lighter. Yeah, okay. No, no, not you, Red. Yeah, sure. Well, if you haven't got it, you can't lend it. Yeah, all right. Thanks a lot. Bye. Did you reach Buzz? Yeah, I called him, Ray Pearson, Jimmy Cook, all. None of them had it. Too bad. Dollar three? Exact change. There you go. Nobody checks my cash except this once a week bookkeeper and he don't come around till Thursday. I could put it back before Thursday, I could put it back tomorrow. As soon as I get that 20 bucks from Buzz. Yeah. Yeah. How's every little thing? Just fine. That's good. Well, I'll, I'll see you later, huh? Have you been dancing lately? Yeah. I, I went last Saturday. Do you ever go hiking anymore? Once in a while. Do you remember the Sunday we hiked up Pioneer Canyon? Yeah. Didn't we have fun? Yeah. We had lots of fun. Well, Danny, will you give me a ring sometime? Sure, I'll give you a ring. We'll get together real soon. I'll, uh, I'll see you later. I'll, I'll give you a ring soon. Taxi lady? Where's your meter? I'll figure out the fare as we go along. <laughs> you might overcharge me. I might at that. Hop in, honey. Where'd you like to go? Uh, let's go downtown. Window oh, shopping. How dull can you get? Well, well that's what I want to do. We can, uh, we can do something else later. You have a deal, honey. Still here. Nice looking coat. But they'd suck you at least a thousand bucks for a coat like that. Are you kidding? Why, that's mink. It's a bargain at two thousand. Isn't that the most beautiful thing you've ever seen in your life? Well, it's not bad. Are you thinking on buying it? I want that coat. And I'm gonna get it. For $2,000? For whatever it takes. Say, wait a minute. You, you really do want it, don't you? You bet I do. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Huh? Ah, they're blue. Uh-uh. Brown. Yeah, but there's blues in your big brown eyes. Oh, you sing too. <laughs> Only for you, honey. <laughs> Shall we go? 
closed Mondays. How do you like that? Are you sure you didn't happen to know it was closed when you invited me? No, oh, wait a minute. Would I do a thing like that? I'll take any place you want to go. Name it and you can have it. All right. All right. I know a place where I'd like to go. You hear me? I'll save you all the trouble of growing up, you. What's the matter? Cut that out. You want to break the machine? Hello, Nick. Oh, it's you. Give me a nickel, Danny. I'll show you how to beat this game. Hey, Nick, pay me. I hit the jackpot. Hey. That's all for you. Hey, wait a minute. Go ahead, honey. Play it as much as you want. Take it easy, Danny. I can handle Nick myself. I used to work here. Didn't I, Nick? Yeah. Come back, huh? Still in the window, Nick. I saw it yesterday. Are you crazy? What do you think I am, a millionaire? What's going on here? Oh, let's skip it. Come on, we'll have our pictures taken. Come on. See you later, Nick. Who goes first? We both go. What do you want? Give me a half a buck's worth of nickels. Okay, Admiral. Now what do you want? There's only nine nickels there, buddy. Yeah? Who's cheating who? What? Look, you got your nickel, haven't you? Hit the road. Nick. Look, I've got rules in this house. That goes for you, too. If you want to pull that kind of stuff, go somewhere else. Come on, beat it. Beat it. Come on, Vera, let's get out of this crummy joint. Goodbye, Nick. That big star right there? Yeah. That's Beetlejuice. Who? Beetlejuice. Beetlejuice, Dave used to call it. Dave? Who's Dave? Oh, fell I used to know. He taught me the names of all the stars. You know, I never saw a star until I was 16. How come? I was raised in Steeltown in West Virginia, and you couldn't see the sky for the smoke. So I ran away. Funny, I ran away from home, too. That was a long, long time ago. I, uh, what'd you do after you ran away from home? Oh, I was a car hop for a while, waitress in a beer joint, clerked in a five and ten, cashier in a coffee shop. It's not what you run away to, it's what you run away from. I ran away from a farm and the belt the old man used to whip me with. That old man was sure free with that belt. 
Oh, I ran away from a lot of things. Ma getting drunk all the time and never having any decent clothes to wear. And, and the boarders, especially those boarders. They wouldn't leave me alone. Must have been tough. I learned to handle them after a while. Think you could handle me? Sure. I can handle you easy. Yeah. Hello, is Buzz there? He what? Took a fishing party. I want to leave. Be back. Not. No, 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 never mind. I'll... All right, I'll call him later. Bye. The bookkeeper. What's he doing here two days ahead of time? If he finds out I'm short, he'll tell the old man. The old man's mean enough to send a guy to jail just for laughs. I gotta get 20 bucks in a hurry. How about that salary loan outfit? The one that's always yakking on the radio. Walk in with an honest face, walk out with a pocket full of dough. Uh, I must have walked in with a wrong face. A couple of days to check my references. I haven't got any references, and I haven't got a couple of days. for a dollar down, like it says in the window? As soon as we check up on your credit. Credit? Yeah. Oh. I can't wait that long. Oh, wait a minute. Uh, you got a charge account in town? No, I... Yes, yes, I have, at the hub. At the hub where I buy my clothes. I tell you what I'll do. I'll call that credit manager, and if he says you're okay, you can take the watch right with you. Okay? Now, oh, there, let's get it on and show you what it looks like. How much could you let me have on this ticker? Thirty dollars do you any good? Thirty dollars will be fine. Any better than last week? I don't know yet, Mr. Mackey. I'll let you know. Well, about that other matter, see if you can't find a way to make it a business deduction. I'll think about it, Mr. Mackey. Hi, George. Hi, Dan. You're, uh, here kind of early this week, aren't you? The old man sent for me. Had some tax reports for me to get out. Oh. And I figured as long as I was here, I'd get my Thursday work done. Say, Dan, I just checked the register and it's $20 short. Well, may maybe you could have made a mistake or something. No, I checked it twice. Well, you know, sometimes the money gets stuck in the money sack down there. Yeah, yeah, here it is. See? But I looked in the money sack. Just didn't look good enough. Dan Brady. Yeah. I'm Moriarty, California Investigation Service. You bought a watch yesterday at Jay's Jewelers, didn't you? Yeah, yeah, I did. And took it straight to Uncle John's and hocked it. Well, what if I did? Don't play dumb. Why would you buy a watch for $100 and hock it the same day for $30? 
Well, I... Because you don't intend to pay the hundred, that's why. Now, wait a minute. Don't holler before you heard, pal. I, I signed up to pay that thing ten bucks a month. When the month's up, I'll pay him the ten bucks. No, no, you won't. Because Jay Jewelers don't think you're going to be here when the month's up. They think you're going to skip town. So you'll pay up now or Jay's going to swear out a warrant. A warrant? Warrant for what? I'll give it to you in words of one syllable, my friend. When you buy something on the installment plan, you sign what they call a conditional sales contract. Yeah? This contract says that the watch, the radio, or the easy chair don't belong to you until you make your last payment. It says that if you sell, mortgage, or hock something you don't own yet, you're guilty of larceny. And a $100 watch is grand larceny. That's three years in the penitentiary in this state. Oh, you... You're kidding me, aren't you? Kidding? Me? Not in your life. You signed a contract like this, didn't you? Yeah, I did. Read what it says right there. The debt is payable. Within 24 hours, our charges will be bought. Well, look, I... Uh, I can't get a hold of a hundred bucks, I mean, just like that right away. Well, you better dig it up somewhere. Because if you don't pay up by noon tomorrow, a little man's going to call on you with a big warrant. That's all, brother. Until noon tomorrow. Hey, Chuck. Yeah? What does a guy do when he... when he needs lots of dough? Me, I usually hawk my watch. It's a great idea. Maybe I can get some dough on my jalopy. I wonder how much they'll give me for it. Dice. What good is 300 bucks? I still owe the finance company 350. By half past eight, I'd tried everything I could think of, and I still hadn't raised a hundred dollars. I hadn't raised a buck and a quarter. So I threw in the towel and headed for Phil's place to knock off a couple of beers. The longer I sat on that silly stool, the more I felt like slugging somebody. I got a socked old man Mackie for being so tight. Or the guy in the jewelry store for sending Moriarty after me. Or, or the fellow standing next to me at the bar because he had money in his pocket and I didn't. I'm Mr. Alley, Phil Lee. 360, Shorty. Okay, I gotta get home before the old lady chaps my ears off. Haven't you got something smaller? This one's a 50. Well, how's this one? That's another 50. Here, let me look. There's a five right there on top. Oh, this one. Yeah. Just keep the same. I gotta get home before the old lady slaps me down. <laughs> Who? Your wife. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, the old lady. Good night, fellas. <laughs> so long, Shorty. How's a joker like that rate all that dough? Shorty, he runs the bingo game. And do the suckers keep him happy? Another beer, Danny? No. So. Hi, Romany. How is the thing? Hi, Shorty. How's the trick? Okay. Oh, hello, nice boy. Let me tell you a fortune. Maybe you got big one. Oh, leave me alone, will you? Oh, don't fall on your face, you joke. Tell your fortune, will you? I've got a mule, her name is Hal. Fifty miles on the Erie Canal. Good old world.
Reach. Uh, Reach. Come on, I'm not kidding you. Let's go. All right, come on in the back. Down on the floor. Hurry up. After anybody before. Oh, Millie, please. Say, take it easy. What's the rush? Nobody's chasing us. Ah, that's right. Nobody's chasing us. We've got all night, haven't we? <laughs> sure we have. Uh, maybe you've got all night. Me and Helen, we only got five minutes till the last show. Uh, Lodger's the general. Millie, I almost forgot. I've already seen this picture. I saw it when it was downtown at the palace. But you said... Oh, I got it. You wouldn't mind if I went alone, would you? No, I wouldn't mind. I didn't think so. Goodbye, then. Bye. Gee, Dan, this is like old times. Yeah. Let's go on the roller coaster and, and the chutes and the dipper. Let's go on everything. All right. My knees were really shaking back there. I thought the cops had bust out of that alley any minute. Yeah, but now I'm in the clear. With heavy dough in my pocket, I can pay off that jewelry store and have enough left over to show Vera the biggest time she ever had. Vera. I've got a date with her tonight. I promised to meet her at Nick's place. Uh, what time is it? It's 25 to 10. Holy smoke, I promised to meet a guy a half hour ago. I'm, I'm kind of late. I'm sorry, Kit. Can I, can I walk you to the bus or something? Well, you, you don't have to, Dan. I can get home by myself. Well, uh, I'll give you a ring, and we'll, we'll get together sometime soon. Uh, I'll, I'll see you later, sir. Cheers. Don't come back. I want my $50. Do me a favor, will you? Drop dead. Take your hands off what I want. Don't you hear me? I don't like to be pushed around. I just don't. I got it. What's all this about $50? It wasn't a loan, it was a present. I don't want you taking $50 from a guy like this ever. Let's get out of here. Celebrating. You're supposed to be celebrating something? Oh, got to be. Last night you were spending dollar bills, and tonight it's 50s. I won it in a crap game. Oh. You sure it wasn't bingo? Two champagne cocktails. What do you mean, bingo? Just thought you might have won it from Shorty McCabe. I'll give you that idea. Maybe it was Evelyn. Evelyn? Who's Evelyn? 
bookkeeper in the movie house. She saw us, Shorty, lose it in the auto park. What do you know about this? She just came into Nick's place to phone the cops. Cops? What'd she say? They're a long time no see. How about a dance? No, thanks. Your boyfriend won't mind. No, thanks. Can I buy you both a drink? No. no, no. Isn't there anything I can do for you? Yeah, blow. You heard her. What'd she say? She said she saw the guy who did it with a handkerchief around his face. He took Shorty for his bankroll. Didn't he? How do I know? Just thought you might have heard about it. Anyhow, if it was me, and I'd won any $50 bills, I wouldn't go spending them around the pier. Yeah? Why not? Because everyone around here knows that Shorty carries 50s. guy named Shorty, and, and I won this dough in a crap game, see? Oh, now, sure you did. Sure you did, Danny. Let's spend some of it, huh? Uh, that's, that's more like it. Only, we won't spend the 50s, will we? No. No, we won't spend the 50s. There's a hundred dollars. Here's your dough. There's your contract. So long, Brady. So long. Back A motor. Who? This is him speaking. How'd I like to what? How would you like to take a big jump off the pier? No, I don't like to take a jump off the pier. But you better come and see me or else. Or else what? Or else something is going to happen to you. To you, Danny boy. on your mind and it better be good. Oh, it's very good. <laughs> you know, last night a prize fighter, a big prize fighter, he left something here. I picked it up. Picked it up where you left it. It's got a knot in it. You know, like like you use for a mask or something. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. No? No. But I'll take it just for luck. Sure, sure. You you keep my handkerchief. I I keep your handkerchief. Same knot only only your handkerchief got blood on it. So what? Did you ever hear anybody say money talks? Fifty dollar bills, they talk very loud. It's big bills. What do they say? It says, Shorty McCabe, Shorty McCabe. Yeah, that's what it says, Shorty McCabe. What's your angle? What are you trying to tell me? I'm telling you about a holdup. You see, Evelyn from the picture show, she... she saw the man get rubbed, and she got a very good look at the guy who did it. She thinks she can identify him very easy. Nice girl, you want me to call her? Wait a minute, put it down. If you're so sure that I was mixed up in this thing, why don't you call the cops? Cops? Oh, no. I'm a businessman. See, Danny boy, I, I think I can do business with you very nice. What kind of business do you think you could do with me? Automobile business. You get me a new car and, and I don't know nothing. Just nothing. A new car? I couldn't get a new car if I wanted to. Well, you can get a new car. Same way you got the $50 bill. Are you nuts? Nuts? <laughs> Me? <laughs> no, I, I don't think so. Davis? Yes? Here are the plates for the green sedan. See that it's ready for delivery in the morning. Yes. Moment, Davis. 
But let me catch you putting in 10 gallons of gas this time. Six is plenty. Yes, sir. There goes the last new car we'll have this month. I've got to get it tonight or blow town tomorrow. Even if I blow town, they'll probably catch up with me. Oh, boy, am I in a mess. Hey, Dan. Dan, I, uh, I was just thinking if you're not going to take Helen out anymore, I, I thought maybe I'd give her a call sometime. Yeah, sure. Why don't you do that, Jack? This thing is stuck back here. It's the uh, green sedan, the second in California Street. It's got license plates on it. That's fine. Well, I promise you I know nothing. Absolutely nothing. Wait, what's the matter? I want the handkerchief. Yeah. You let go All of right. this and I'll let go of it. You let go of it. Okay. What are you going to do with the car? It's none of your business, Danny boy. Well, I'll tell you, I, I sold it to a gambler friend of mine. He's, he's driving it home to Nevada. I see that he does. I don't want it around town here. It's not to give me energy. And don't worry. He's going home tonight. No slip-ups. Okay. took that green sedan. You, you do? Yeah. I could tell the police about it right this minute. But I don't know whether that would help me get back the car or not. You understand? No, I, uh, I don't. Oh, I'm not interested in sending anybody to jail, Brady. I'm interested in getting back that car. I don't know why you're telling me all this, Mr. Oh, Hunter. yes, you do. An employee of this firm stole that sedan, and I happen to know who it is because it was seen. Oh. If you're trying to pin this thing on me, now, Mr. Don't Bennett, try to run any bluffs, How Brady? many times do I have to tell you You don't that? have to tell me anything. All you have to do is to get that car down here parked out in front before I get down tomorrow. But if I haven't got it, what if I don't know where it is? But you did have it, and you do know where it is. Well, I don't anymore. If you can't return the car, you'll have to pay for it. $3,000. $3,000? But that only lists for nineteen fifty. You don't think I'd sell to you at list? $3,000. Where would a guy like me get any dough like that? Well, most everybody's got a family someplace. Why, folks would go to a lot of trouble to keep a man out of jail. Not mine. Now, look, I'll give you 24 hours, Brady. I want the money or I want the automobile. Now, let me give you some warning. Don't you try to leave town. thousand dollars. It might as well have been three million. I tried to remember who could have seen me in the green sedan. Nobody had known I had it except Nick. Nick. Maybe that was who told the old man. Nick hated me. He'd cut my throat for a nickel. Hey, 
Hey. What's the matter with you tonight? Well, you look like you lost your last friend. How'd you like to go to Texas, honey, right now, right away? Are you kidding? I'm on the level. Uh huh. What's the matter with California? Weather getting too warm? Tell you about it later. So I'm in a worse jam than ever. My boss is gonna throw me in the brig if I don't get a hold of three thousand bucks or else. Where am I gonna get a hold of three thousand bucks? I know where there's three or four thousand dollars. Yeah, First National Bank. No, not in any bank. But we can get at it. We can get at it easy. All you have to do is to break a little catch lock on a rickety old door. You could pry it open with your fingernails. Not with my fingernails. I'm in too deep already. This is the end of the month. That's when Nick keeps the money overnight. Nick? You mean Nick at the Penny Arcade? Uh-huh. There'll be thousands of dollars there tonight. What would Nick be doing with that kind of dough? He charges people for cashing checks. Today's a big payday. A lot of them will bring their checks in in the morning before the bank's open. And he doesn't even have a safe. He hides it. I know where. It was Nick who got me into all this. Let Nick get you out. Then you won't have to go to Texas. You can stay here with me. Wait a minute. What's the matter? Someone watching us from the house. It's only old Snoop. Who? The landlady. She's always looking for trouble. You know, I had a news program on the air the other night, and she busted in and tried to tell me I had a man in my room. She's still watching us. Well, let's give her something to watch. Stay out here and look out for the watchman. If I see him coming, I'll honk the horn. Blow it three times so I'll know it's you. All right, Danny. Good luck.
Get the money? Yeah. I heard shooting. What happened? The night watchman saw me. Well, you took a big chance tonight and you got away with it. You ought to be tickled to death. Well, I'm not. I feel like I'm being shoved into a corner, and if I don't get out soon, it'll be too late. Maybe it's too late already. But you can stop worrying. You're out right now. You got the money in your pocket to pay your way out. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. I've got the money. That'll square everything, won't it? I wonder how much there is. Feels like a lot. Let's take it up to my room and count it. All right. Pull down those shades. Five hundred in each of these packages. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. That's thirty-five hundred dollars. Twenty, forty, sixty, eighty, ninety, hundred, hundred and ten. Thirty-six hundred and ten dollars. Yeah, it's a lot of dough. Why, that's more money than I could make in a year working every day. What's the coppers? Just like I thought. What's the big idea? Who said you can come in? I have rules in this house. This is a clean, respectable place. Well, you got no right in here. Now get out. I don't allow no men in the rooms. Not in my house. And I am not leaving until he goes. You're leaving right now. Maybe you'd rather I'd call the cops. Why, you old bad luck! Cut it out, will you? We don't want any trouble, especially now. Yeah, but... Maybe I ought to go. You think you can take care of everything all right? Oh. Yeah, sure, Danny, don't worry. I can take care of everything. I'll call you in the morning. I don't want any of your kind around here. And when your rent's up, you can move out. Scram! Hello, is Vera no back there? Hey, you're going to wear that thing out today. Oh, this is her. Why don't you forget this... about it? She's just a minute, day. please. Will you sh do me a favor and shut up, please? Sorry. Oh, this is her day off. She wouldn't be at the restaurant. Look, when she comes in, would you tell her to call Dan Brady at Mackey Motor? It's very important. As soon as she comes in. All right. Thank you. Well, Brady. Well? I didn't see that green sedan when I came down this morning. No, you didn't, did you? Does that mean you can't get it back? It can mean anything you want it to mean. Well, then I assume you intend to pay for the car instead. Oh, do you? How long will it take you to get the money? I've got it already. Yeah? Yeah. Fine. Why don't you come right into the office? Well, huh? I haven't got it on me. I have to pick it up tonight after work. I can bring it in the morning. Why wait till tomorrow? I'll come right back after dinner tonight. You can see me in the office then. Well, might be, might be 10 o'clock or so. It's all right, Brady. It's perfectly all right. I'll see you tonight. Mac A. Motor. Hello, Vera. Where have you been? Did you take care of everything all right? Good. Well, that's swell, baby. Look, I'll, uh... I'll be over and see you tonight as soon as I get off work, right after 6 o'clock. Goodbye. Is that you, Danny? Yeah. Come right in. Beautiful, Danny. Oh, Danny, Danny. I might never have had it if it hadn't been for you. Where'd you get the coat? I bought it. Bought it with what? With my share of the money. Here's your end. Eighteen hundred dollars. You took half that dough and bought a coat with it? Not just a coat, Danny, a mink coat. You sold me out. Oh, now, just a minute. Who told you where the money was? Who told you how to get it? Isn't that worth half? I can't use half. I need 3,000. Oh, don't be a chump. Nobody expects to get everything you ask for. Make him an offer. That's what I did. What you did? Sure. Now, this coat cost $2,000. I told the furrier 1,800 was all I had, and he could take it or leave it. 
took it. Mm. Offer this to the old man. Tell him it's all you could raise. I bet anything he takes it. You're doing the sensible thing. There's only 1,800 here. That's right. Where's the rest of it? I couldn't dig it up. Take it or leave it. I'll take it. the police station. What's the idea? I told you I'd forget about the whole thing for $3,000, but not for $1,800. Now, if you've got the rest of it on you, you'd better pay me now before it's too late. Why, oh, you... Oh. 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 Danny, I, I missed your quitting time tonight. I wanted to say goodbye. Uh, goodbye? Yeah, I quit today. I'm through with that screwball Mackie. I told you what he tried to pull on me, didn't I? No, oh, no, you didn't. Well, you remember the night the sedan disappeared? Well, the next morning, he called me in his office and tried to tell me I swiped it. He said what? Like I'm telling you, he said I stole the car. Gave me a lot of hooey about somebody seeing me drive away. Wait a minute, I'm all mixed up. Let me get this thing straight. He said that he saw you drive that car away? And that ain't all. Yesterday he called me in his office and he had some screwy idea I should get 3,000 bucks for my old man to pay for the sedan. Now, how nuts can a guy get? He didn't know anything at all. He was just fishing around, putting the pressure on everybody, hoping something would turn up. Yeah, I should have let him have one talking to me like that. Some of these days, that old man is going to get his neck in a sling. Neck in a sling? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, he had it coming, though, didn't he? I was trying to outsmart everybody, but he got too smart. Yeah, he, he got so smart, he got his neck in a sling. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Daddy, Daddy, what is it? What's the matter? <laughs> I, uh, I, uh, I have a date here. I'm, I'm late already. How'd it go? Did he take the money? Yeah, yeah, he took it. I told you he would. Pack your things. We gotta get out of here. What are you talking about? He tried to call the cops. I had to stop him. Stop him? How? Never mind. Pack your things. Stop clowning, Danny. How? I'm not clowning. He tried to call the cops. I had to take the phone away from him. He pulled a gun on me. I... I strangled him. On the level? On the level. Look, they won't find him until in the morning. By that time, we'll be halfway to Texas, baby. You'll be halfway to Texas. 
Not me. But the cops will be after us. They won't be after me. I don't have to run away. Look, we're in this thing together. You told me to offer him the dough. I didn't tell you to kill him. And I wasn't there when it happened. So why should I stick my neck out and What now? kind of a dame are you? The kind that watches out for herself. If I didn't, who would? Well, you don't care about anybody else, do you? Why, sure I do. Why, I wouldn't want to see anything happen to you, Danny. I certainly wouldn't want to see the cops catch you. Don't you think you'd better get started to Texas? I'll, uh... I'll kiss you goodbye if you want me to. Or I would dirty my lips. One more flight. Miss Novak, some gentlemen to see you. Search warrant. See what she's got in her purse, Smitty. Right. You won't find him in there. You won't find who in there? You know who. Dan Brady. Oh, yeah, Dan Brady. Where will I find him? He's getting out of the state as fast as he can drive. Why aren't you getting out, too? I didn't have any part of it. I didn't even know him. Didn't know who? Say, are you trying to make me look like a fool? Mackie, of course. Mackie? Which Mackie is that? Oh, the one that ran the automobile agency. Ran? Well, he can't keep on running it now that he's dead, can he? Dead? Who's dead? Mackie, of course. Brady killed him. The girl didn't have any part of it. Where did it happen? You know where. At the autumn of... Say, are you trying to kid me? Sure. Maybe it's the other way around. Maybe you're trying to kid me. Why did you start spilling the minute I came in the door? Maybe it's because you wanted me to think your boyfriend had gone when he hadn't. How do I know he isn't still here? Why didn't you look under the couch? I don't suppose he'd be that near. <laughs> no, I didn't think he'd be that close. Smitty. Watch it. Ha, ha, ha. Ha, ha, ha. Where does a dame like you get a coat like this? I bought that coat with my own money. You take your dirty hands off it. I'll bet you did. I can prove it. I, I got a receipt. Here. Here. Alaska Furriers, 917 Main Street. Received a Vera Novak, $1,800. Well, looks like Nick had the right hunch, Smith. Nick? What do you suppose brought us here? Last night, somebody stole $3,600 of Nick's money, and today you paid $1,800 for a fur coat. Looks like you and your boyfriend split Nick's bankroll right down the middle. I don't know what you're talking about. Give me back my coat. Don't worry you... about your coat, sister. We'll take it right with us. Bring her along, no, Smitty. But... We'll check on Mackie on the way down to the station. Serves you right, your hussy. Drop dead. Trouble, so I got rid of Chuck and came down. Get yourself right back home. I gotta get out of here quick. What is it, dear? Was it the hole up in the auto car? What do you know about that hole? I saw you hiding in the alley that night. The night that Millie and I walked by. I couldn't see your features, but I knew that it was you. But then I thought maybe I was imagining things. You know how it is when you love someone. You you think you see him 50 times a day. But a minute later you called my name and I turned around and there you were at the head of the alley. Then we heard about the hold up in the auto park and I and I saw the look on your face. Is that all? That's all. Well, why don't you get out and let me get started? 
I saw the police come out of the house with her. Are they after you two? What if they are? What business is it of yours? But I can help you. I can tell them you're with me all evening, and you'll have an alibi. I don't get it. Why do you want to help me? When things were going my way, all I ever gave you was a run around. Now that I'm in a jam, why don't you get smart and stay away from me? I've been away from you too long, and it isn't any good. Don't you think I know I'm dumb to throw myself at a guy that doesn't want me? Don't you think I know I'm a fool to stand on a street corner for an hour just waiting for you to come out of a door? I know all that, but I can't help it. I fell in love with you the first time I saw you, Ted. I'll drive you home. It's less than a week since Helen waited for me outside the garage. Have you been dancing lately, she said, and all I had to do was say, well, I did, let's go out tonight. And if I'd have said that, I wouldn't be running away from the cops tonight with a murder hanging over my head. No, Dan, no. Hey, buddy, pull over to the curb. Let's take a look at your driver's license. Brady, that's your name? Yes, sir. You went through a boulevard stop back there. Will you sign this? Yes. And take it easy. Yeah. Helen, you, you kept me from making an awful mistake. Well, if you'll only take me with you, I can help you. I know I can. Let me lay it on the line. I'm going to have to keep running. I'm going to have to keep running all my life because when they catch up with me, they're going to hang me. Hang you? For murder. I... I killed a man tonight. Start the car, then tell me how it happened. Telling her about it wasn't as hard as I thought it would be. And it was Helen who came up with the idea of Mexico. We decided to head for an inland town like Hermosillo, where not many tourists come. A man could be safe for 50 years in a place like that. Goodbye to Mexico. Oh, it's the main bearing. It'll take a couple of days of fix. Well, then we'll have to hitchhike. And get there by morning, we'd never make it. We have to make it. Oh, Helen, I've had the right girl all the time and was too dumb to know about it. If we ever get out of this thing... We're gonna get out of it. Yeah, but how? I've got an idea. Uh, this is the baby that's going to get us there. Well, what are you going to do with that? Get us a lift, honey. A lift straight through to Mexico. Come on. Careful. Get in quick. Don't try any funny stuff. I don't want to hurt you. All right, when the signal changes, get going. Turn south on the highway, keep her under 50, and don't go through any red lights, you understand me? May I ask where we're going? Just keep driving, you'll find out. I suppose you know what you're getting into. This isn't a car theft. It's kidnapping. No one asks you. I don't want your advice, you hear me? Well, I happen to be a lawyer. Maybe... Maybe you can keep your mouth shut, too. No, Dan. Let him talk. He might be able to help us. She's right. Whatever it is you're running away from, this is worse. Kidnapping is a capital offense. They can hang you for it. What's the difference? They're gonna hang me anyway. I just killed a man. How about the girl? You leave her out of it. She had nothing to do with you, understand me? I believe that. But with the police. Look, son, I can see this girl means something to you. Why don't you tell me what happened? For her sake, she need a lawyer sooner or later. 
Maybe you're right. If you're sure you could keep her in the clear. If she's innocent, you tell me the whole story, and it's the truth. The truth? I don't know where to begin. Start at the beginning. The guy was a lawyer. And maybe he could help Helen, so I told him the whole story. I, I told him about sticking up Shorty in the auto park and about breaking into the Penny Arcade in the middle of the night. I told him about Vera, Nick, and old man Mackey. I told him everything that had happened, from the very beginning to the end. I see. Now the first thing you want to know is where the girl stands. That's right. She's in the clear. They can't touch her. Oh, but how about Dan? You said maybe it wouldn't be murder. It might be manslaughter. No, it's murder, all right. I might be able to get him off with second degree. They'd have a hard time proving premeditation. Second degree? That, that'd that mean life, wouldn't it? it? It could. I'd rather they hung me. There's one discrepancy in your story. It's worth checking up on, because if we get the right answer, murder's out. Manslaughter, too. What, what, what do you mean? How do you know he's dead? Well, he, he's dead, that's all. He, his head fell over on the desk like he was dead. It would do that if he were unconscious. Did you feel his pulse or listen for a heartbeat? No, I, no, I didn't. Men don't die easily. They take a lot of killing. I can imagine Mackie sitting in a police station right now telling the desk man what a narrow escape he had. If he only was alive, Helen, if he only was alive, I... I'd give myself up to the first cop that came along. He's an all-night restaurant. Why don't I use their phone to find out how Mackie is? Why don't you keep on driving, too? I'll tell you how Mackie is. He's dead. That's what he's dead. Oh, but Dan, maybe he is. No, he is. I know he is. Listen, you, I didn't want to kill anybody. I don't want to kill you now, but if you try any more funny stuff, I'll... I'll blow a hole right through you. What day is this, Helen? It's Saturday. No, it isn't. It's Sunday morning. We still have a couple of hours before daylight. We can still make it. Turn this car around. Where are we going now? Remember Buzz Larson? Yeah. He's taking a fishing party way down past San Diego this morning. If we can get to the pier in time, I can go with him. To Mexico? Way past the Mexican border. Step on it, will you? The boat is still here. Yeah. Yeah, there it is. Down there. We made it. We'd better hurry. I'd better hurry, not you. Oh, well, I'm going with you, Dan. No, I've got there's to. no harbor below San Diego. I'll have to swim in from the sea. Well, I'm going with you, Dan. You've taken too many chances already. I've got to go on by myself from here on. I'll send for you as soon as I get a job. You know that, don't you, baby? Oh, yes, but... Oh, Dan, don't go. I'm so afraid. There's nothing to be afraid of. Hey, wait a minute. Maybe there is. How are we going to keep this guy from going to the cops till after the boat pulls out of the harbor? I'll keep him away. Give me the gun. I wouldn't do that if I were you. Why not? I told you the girl was in the clear. She won't be if she takes that gun. After that, she'll be an accessory. Oh, don't listen to him, Dan. No. You've got to get away from No, he's from right. Here. You've got to be kept out of this. That's all that's important now. Would you take my word for something? I might. As a citizen, I have to notify the police. But as, well, as a friend, I don't have to hurry. Thanks. Would you do me another favor? If I can. Don't wait until the boat pulls out of the harbor. Leave now. I'll get her out of here right away. Thanks. You haven't seen Brady since noon Monday. No, I haven't. And you haven't heard from him either? No. Nope. Wait a minute, I just remembered. He phoned me Monday afternoon. For any particular reason? Yeah, I owed him 20 bucks. He said he needed it. There's a news broadcast at 6 o'clock. I want to hear it before I talk to the authorities. Regarding every airport, every bus depot, and every railroad station in a determined effort to prevent the killer's escape. 
At four o'clock this morning, officers threw roadblocks across both state highways and are now stopping all outbound cars. But at last reports, McDonald was still at large. McDonald? Meanwhile, police officers Truxton and Chandler are dead, and Deputy Sheriff Alan P. Janus was taken to the emergency hospital with two bullets in his thigh. I'll get it a little louder. Closer to home, Beach City authorities are seeking garage mechanic Daniel Brady, 26, an employee of the Mackey Motor Company. Late yesterday evening, watchman Michael J. O'Brien, while making his regular nightly rounds, discovered the unconscious body of Oren Mackey, president of the automobile agency, lying in his office. Mackey regained consciousness at St. Mark's Hospital shortly after midnight and named Brady as his assailant. What? That he's alive. Tom, you want to watch yourself before you run into that kid. He's dangerous. What's dangerous about him? He's got Mackey's gun. Hey, Buzz! Buzz! Wait a minute! I'm coming! Hey, who's that fellow there? That might be our boy. Take a look at him. Have you ever been in trouble before? No, no, never. Well, I think we can rule out the watch and the $20 bill. They probably charge you with the holdup, stealing the car, and breaking you to the Penny Arcade. That could add up to anything from one to 10 years. But since you're a first offender, my guess is that it'll be nearer one than 10. Whatever it is, I'll take it. Whenever it is, I'll be waiting for you, Dan, if you want me to. You're a great gal, Helen. I love you, Dan. That goes both ways. 